Yeah, I was just seeing what was going on right there. <laughs> how, uh, how good did that feel? Yeah, it felt good. You know, obviously, look, um, you know, it's, it's one game, right? So, you know, this is part of the year where, all right, you know, enjoy it tonight, but then it's time to go tomorrow, right? And then, um, so that'll be, you know, what we'll try to do, we'll try to correct it, move forward. Obviously, it wasn't perfect, uh, but we came in with a plan, and for the most part, I thought we executed that plan and did what we wanted to do, and, and it felt good ending the game how we wanted to end it. You guys didn't play together a lot this preseason. Yeah. Going back this week, didn't know the starting five were to yeah. front, but granted, you were going to make the critical mistake, got away with one every four and a half, but uh, felt like you guys moved the ball pretty well when you needed it. Yeah, no, I think, you know, Everyone bought into what we were trying to do, right? And, um, you know, we it, it's been different, right? It's been different technique-wise for a lot of us, but uh, you see a lot of buy-in from guys, guys trying to do it the right way. And when you have guys trying to do it that way and not operating in their own system, it's easy to adjust like that, right? And Yeah, and so, um, you know, thought we did some good things. Obviously, they, they had some plans, did some things in the second half to kind of try to stop the run game. Um, from my perspective, some movement stuff. You know, things like that, that, you know, made it harder to run. But, hey, when they knew we were running it and we did too, you know, we got the upper hand. What might you be able to share with us about the atmosphere in the locker room with Gerard, you know, getting his first career win? Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess uh, Cincinnati was RKK's first win too. So, um, yeah, you know, guys are excited. Guys are happy. Uh, you know, we put in a lot of work, um, you know, from – guys from the off season on their own time to, you know, workouts, to OTAs, to training camp, and, and obviously a lot of work this week. And, um, you know, it's hard to win in this league, and, and I know that firsthand. I've been on both sides of it, and you enjoy the victories, and then, you know, the message has got to be move on, right? Because what you did last week really doesn't matter, and, and uh, you know, we'll have a big challenge coming up this week. How would you describe, Gerard, just how he was on game day and your early returns on his head coaching abilities? Yeah, you know, I – I have to ask him how it feels because, you know, I know how it feels as a player, but, you know, which one he liked more. So we'll see, uh, you know, because I can't imagine, uh, you know, because you don't have that much control as a head coach when you're playing. You can kind of control it. So, um, but, hey, you know, it was a great job by him getting us ready all week. Um, you know, all the coaches had a great plan. Um, obviously, a lot of familiarity with our offense coaches and, and Cincinnati. Uh, so we thought we had a good plan. And, and for the most part, we executed that plan. Um, you know, it wasn't a glaring, you know, issue to me out there. Obviously, there'll be things to clean up and things we can do better, but it wasn't like, you know, oh, my gosh, this happened, you know, so. You had so many pieces in and out all summer on the offensive line. Yeah. What can you say maybe you learned about that group from day one? Yeah, a lot, you know, look, everyone has different strengths and weaknesses, you know, myself included, obviously, and, and you're just trying to get guys to play with each other, play within the system. You know, I, I think <clears> – <throat> Years we've had of success up front, guys don't have to do anything special. Play within the system, do your job, you know, all those mantras and all that stuff, right? But it's true. If you play within the system, you trust your technique, you know, you can have success and, and you get everyone going the right way. And, you know, for the most part, we thought we did that today. There wasn't, like I said, anything glaring, you know, any brain farce, whatever you want to say, you know, and guys competed and worked their tails off, so I'm proud of them. Let's take two more. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think there's definitely some things we'd like to clean up, you know, in that and turn some of those into touchdowns, um, you know, obviously. And, and that, we'll clean that up and, and look at that. And, uh, but, you know, it was good complimentary football, right? And that's what we talk about a lot. And, um, you know, obviously tried, you know, struggle coming out of half defense. I think that was the punt return fumble. And then we got that to points. So we had a six point swing right there. Uh, you know, and that, that's good complimentary football. That's what we talk about. Yeah, it was one. He kind of stepped up in the pocket, and I didn't know if he was going to run or throw, so I kind of stopped. I already got called one time for being downfield, so and then he just kind of took off and got smoked. But, you know, I thought he showed great toughness, right? And to have a tough football team, it doesn't just come up front. It has to come from every position, and the quarterback doing some things like that, some dirty work, you know, getting taking those hits, keeping going, you know, just being steady. That's how they show toughness, and Jacoby was that for us today and did a great job. Thanks, guys. Thank you. How good did that feel from start to finish for you guys? Oh, that felt great. Um, that felt great. Great way to start the season. We're ready to just build on it now. What did you guys, what was your game plan coming in and, and how close were you to be able to execute it? It seemed like to 
Uh, just um, play good fundamental football. Obviously, we knew you know the calls we had in defensively. Um, we needed to execute well, but we had, knew we had a great game plan in from DC. Um, so just execute, execute, tackle well, fundamentals, um, play after play. How important was it for you guys to get pressure rushing only four the times? You guys dropped seven, showed you were coming, but bailed out. It seemed like Burrow was a little unsure in the pocket, especially in that first half. Yeah, that was huge for us. Um, anything to make them think, you know, maybe rattle them a little bit. Um, you know, showing that pressure and, and dropping out, we knew that was something that we thought we could have success on. Um, and I think, think we did. Kyle, the forced fumble in the near the goal line. Can you take us through that play? Yeah, it was just um, man coverage, and I got picked. Um, I, was, I had to do a better job at, you know, getting through the screen, seeing the traffic. But um, it was just one, one last shot to get the ball out. I saw the goal line, and, you know, I just, you know, basically gave everything I could to get the ball out, um, try to strip the ball off, and I was able to have success, thankfully. And yeah, where does that come from, that that's not stop, non-stop hustle? Because, you know, it was like a last-chance play that you were able to make that. Where does that, that, that motivation come right there? Oh, that's every day um, in practice. That's something Coach Mayo stresses, you know, from top down, you know, punching at the ball, you know, play after play, you know, even the routine plays, punching at the ball. Um, so that's definitely on the top of your mind, you know, when you're pursuing the ball and things like that. And you see it, I feel like the, you know, coaches emphasizing that definitely allows you to kind of see it when you get the opportunity a little better. Um, so, yeah, just that's always on our mind. And how good did it feel to walk into that locker room and the ball goes to Gerard Mayo and Robert Jonathan giving the ball and yeah. you guys get his first win. That was a great feeling. It really was. It was a great feeling. What's he meant to you guys? Uh, the way he's really just communicated to us and came to us and, and leaned on us as, as individuals, you know, getting feedback from us, you know, having to be a, you know, a back and forth a relationship has been huge. Um, I think I can't speak for everybody, but I know that's meant a lot to me. Um, and we've been very receptive of that. So, yeah, it's, it's meant a lot. It's still like something potentially new. Not to bring up last year, but you guys played really well defensively last year in our times, holding teams to low scores, but you could get something going on offense. would be a critical error on offense. But the way Jacoby managed the game today, the way Ramondre ran, and the way the offense line blocked, like this combination, you guys can win games doing this. Oh, yeah. It, finding a way to win. That's what it's all about. Um, it may not be the prettiest. We don't necessarily always know how it's going to be. But um, finding a way to win um, is what good teams do, and that's what we hope to continue to do. How would you describe how DeMarcus conducted himself in the game? And not only play calling but on the sideline from, from series to series. What impression did you have of him? Oh, he was great, even killed, communicating, steady talking to us about the East series and kind of letting us know his, his thinking, you know, what he's thinking moving forward, what he thought about the last drive, you know, obviously making corrections. Um, so I, I thought he had just great poise over there and he was definitely communicating um, from drive to drive. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Doug. Thank you. Keon, you, you're two for you now. Yeah. Uh, you've been in a league now where you just kind of get a feel with some of these tackles and guards are going to be. Yeah. The sack you have today, so you're thinking that back foot in, it's twitching. Your pad level, you get up under it. Yeah. You feel that anybody can block you when you've got that pad level up under it. Um, I just try to go fast. Like, I'm not the cleanest pass rusher. I'm not the most like technical, but I try to just go fast and just let let everything work out for itself. For uh, How uh did this feel for you guys as a defense, which you guys were able to do the borrowing company today, too? Mm -hmm. I mean, um, personally, it was good. I mean, winning always is good. Um, but doing it for Mayo was, was something special for sure. And all the hard work we put in, the, the running, the conditioning, the hills. I mean, a lot of y'all there, y'all see it. We, we're working hard, and it's, and it's starting to show because we had to dig deep today, even as a defense, and, and, and come in clutch in the fourth quarter. Two more for Keon. Keon, you mentioned that one of your emphases this all season was working on the outside and trying to get better as an edge rusher there. Yeah. How do you feel like you've come along now week one and have looked like you have some success? Uh, I mean, I still got a, lot, a long way to go personally. Um, had the one inside move and everything like that, but can, de can definitely do better. But you can always do better. Um, but yeah, uh, it's still a work in progress. Year two, we're, we're going we're gonna to get to it. You mentioned doing it for Gerard. What has Gerard meant to you? What has he meant to this defense and the team? So um, yeah, as a guy who's been there, who's who's won the championships um, at every level, really, you you kind of just respect that, and you and he wouldn't have you do anything that he hasn't done or wouldn't do himself. And so, he's really like a player's coach. He's relatable. 
he he communicates with all of them, and he, and he makes you want to like, like he said in, in the interview with DJ, like you want to run through a brick wall for him, and so and that and that's something special. I feel like. Uh, not really. I got another quarter in me. So this morning I said you're gonna get 140. You got to get 170 on the ground. What's that feel like after a win at 16-10? Uh, it feels good. Uh, we. Uh, we were challenged all week. We were going to run the ball, control the line of scrimmage. I think we did a great job at that. And, you know, four-minute offense came. They knew we were going to run the ball. We still ran it. You know, what does that mean as, a, as an offense, confidence-wise, when you need to run the ball and you run off the clock? What's that do for you guys as a group? Uh, confidence. Uh, you know, we always had confidence that we could run the ball, dating back to the o, to OTAs and things like that. So, you know, it's just reassurance that we can, we can do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's just uh, I'll just say a compliment to the O linemen. Uh, they're rolling the, those guys off the ball with just duo. I didn't think we needed to get to the outside zone. Uh, so yeah, I voiced my you know my opinion on that. I told AVP I think we should just you know run downhill, and he you know he blessed me and just did that. What did you see in this offensive line? Obviously, we see some practice, especially the last you know week or so, but. Mm-hmm. What did you see in this offensive line that gave you that confidence that you guys could pull together and get it done? Uh, <clears throat> they're just relentless. Uh, they're always want they always want to learn more. Uh, Da is doing a great job with the younger guys up front, just you know, getting us all on the same page and getting our tracks right and things like that. So the confidence has always been there. We got some great players in our room, and you know, uh, I think we showed that tonight, today. Jacoby, sorry, Jacoby in the huddle. What was he like today, and how much do you guys kind of? Uh, yeah, you said it. He's just the ultimate leader. Uh, it's easy to easy to go behind him and you know follow his lead. Uh, you know, great guy. He was a he was just a leader in there. He controlled the huddle. Gerald said that he challenged you in the spring. What do you remember about that conversation? Uh, just, he was just telling me we're gonna run the ball. Uh, we got to be a force in the run game, and he believes in me. And you know, just just get the ball downhill, get first downs, and keep our offense on the field. How good of a one-two punch do you think you and Antonio? Uh, I think we could be a great one-two punch. And even, you know, we got Kevin Harris uh, in our backfield still. We have Jamichael Hasty. I think we're all bring something to the table and we could all be successful in this offense. I feel like your team's physicality was today. I feel like we were very, very physical. I got to go back and watch the film, things like that. But I feel like our offensive line were rolling guys off the ball and, you know, giving me and A.G. lanes to run through. What has Gerard meant to you? Uh, you know, he's our, he's our leader. <clears throat> Great coach. Uh, we're behind him 110%. Uh, you know, he, he gives us fire to go out there and play hard for him, run through brick walls for him. One of the critical first downs was late. It looked like you bounced it outside and, and ran the defenders, got outside, and got 12 yards, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yesterday, you know, that particular play, what you saw in that play, what was the key to that? You said in the fourth quarter? Yes, the fourth quarter. I seen everybody, you know, just crash down, and it was a one on one situation with me and the cornerback if I'm remembering the the right play. So, uh, you know, I like my odds against a DB, so I just took it. Ramondre, what's Taylor Embry meant to you since he got here? How has he helped you maybe have as much success as you He's a great coach, uh, just great guy to be around, uh, talk to him about on the field uh, issues, off the field issues, things like that. We have a good time together in that running back room. Uh, and I think he's just a, he's a great teacher, just like all the other coaches, things like that. He's a great teacher, and, you know, he gets us ready to go on Sundays. Appreciate you guys. Yeah, I feel like you should go last now. <laughs> Second, I'll go ahead. How, uh, how good did that feel for my year? Uh, it felt great. felt great uh, just watching all our hard work and what, what we put all into it throughout the week and throughout the offseason, just reaping the benefits of that. feels good. What does it mean for you to be a part of Lamb's first term as a coach? Special. Special. Just because... One, when Gerard became a coach, me and him were working hand in hand. He's always been like that older brother kind of figure for me. Um, and just watching him kind of just propel into the head coaching job and how, how great he's been doing it, the transition and everything, despite all the outside noise, just staying focused. And we've just been preaching that message throughout the whole team, and it's been working out for us. So we look forward to keeping that going. How were you guys able to stop that Bengals uh, just staying true to what we've been coached uh, throughout the week. We are, obviously Cincinnati got a dynamic group of players. Uh, 
just all across the board, uh, especially like the, nobody even talked about the offensive line. There was many talk about the skill players, but they got a dynamic offensive line too. But we came in the game, we had our, had our rules and certain things that we wanted to get done, certain looks we wanted to show them. Obviously, Joe being a dynamic quarterback, able to read different coverages, so we just wanted to make it hard on him. Obviously, we knew he was going to make his plays, but we just wanted to make more. So uh, we came out and we did that, and I'm, I'm impressed. We're not on the inside, obviously, with you guys. What makes you a believer in drop mail? What are some of the things, his characteristics that make you guys believe? Uh, well, it's not, it's not necessarily just him because at the end of the day, he's just the head coach. He can't go out there and play the games. The games is played between, uh, between the white lines. So he can only just, he's a, he always calls himself a professional reminder. Uh, he's been preaching that even when he was a linebacker coach. Like obviously, we're professionals. It's the big league, so we kind of know we know what to do. But every now and then, you need that reminder, or you need that confirmation, or you need that that confidence and that trust from your head coach. And we, uh, it's good to see how how that plays out and how we kind of take the personality of him. And as well, we got great leadership on this team too, uh, whether it's coaches or players. We got guys who don't necessarily have the captain title, but they they take on that captain role. And when you got guys like that, it's easy to go out there and just play for each other. What reminders were effective today? Uh, so remind. Obviously, we know they got Jay, uh, Jamar Chase, guys like that. So we got to just hone in. We, every team is going to have their their guys. So we just got to make sure everybody just doing their assignment. Uh, at this at this time in the football league, everybody has a dynamic quarterback. So you're not necessarily uh, counting on them making mistakes. We just got to be able to go out there and make plays. And I thought we did that today. And obviously, we're going to enjoy this one, but we look forward to moving on to the next one. Do you want one of those guys who does have the captain's title this year for the first time, Mr. Brill? Mm -hmm. Do you think, seeing him a couple days ago, what he was dealing with, I've practiced and talked about it a few minutes ago, that you would be able to do the effort he did today? What does it say about Well, I would say at this point, nothing Brill does is surprising. Uh, the stuff that he's able to fight through and his grit and his tenacity and his intensity, it just trickles off to the defense. Even I found myself like paying attention to what he's doing and we all just feed off of that. Every, like every day, obviously we got, our job is similar. Obviously we're playing football, but our job, you're not gonna have the juice, quote unquote, every single day. That's why you lean on each other. You got 11 different guys who just lean on each other. If you ain't got it, we know he got it. So then we lean on him and then he kind of bleeds it on to us and it just becomes contagious. And that's something we lean on, that's something we preach. And when it comes, when it, when it comes and happens, when you experience that adversity, or whether it's physical or mental, things happen in the game, that adversity, you gotta be able to lean on each other. And it was, it's, Proving each and every each and every day in practice, it starts on the practice field, and we just hope that the process, progress, payoff. That's what we preach in our building. That's what we show today. Jamal, what's your final question? Do you look at uh, what you guys were able to do defensively? I think Keon had two and a half. You had one and a half sack with him. Mm -hmm. What have you seen him? How have you seen him progress over his early career here and get better and better? Uh, he, he definitely made a conscious effort to just make sure that to, to be that dynamic player that he wants to be. He just didn't expect it to happen or be handed to him, things like that. Keon brings a lot to the table. He's a dynamic player. I think you guys are just seeing a glimpse of what he's capable of. So right now, I would say the sky's the limit for him, a lot of potential. Uh, but obviously, it's week one. So we just, right now, we, we living on this. We living on this right now. But man, we're so hyped to just move on to the next one. And we just, we just hunger. We got that hunger about us. And I love to see that. I know you guys are big on ignoring the noise, but this feels like a defense that every year doesn't really get the respect it deserves. Do you feel like something like this, this performance, is a bit of a statement? And how does it feel you know, knowing you guys proved it on a big stage and so forth? Uh, I would say that's a, that's a great question. I would say that um, I feel like each and every year we always – what the media, with you guys, I would say, <laughs> come up with like a whole bunch of different phrases, whether it be the no-name defense, things like that. But we, we come out each and every week, and we eager to work. Like we just names that y'all doesn't necessarily ain't paying attention to. We ain't we ain't high on y'all list, but that don't mean we ain't dy dynamic players. That don't mean we ain't got guys that's eager to get after it. That don't mean we don't have guys that's gonna give you issues on and off the field. So it's like at the end of the day, the real gonna recognize, and we just look to just progress each and every day. And hopefully, y'all catch on, and maybe you don't, but we just gonna keep rocking. So we, we don't really care. Thank you, Juan. Yeah. Thanks, everyone.